Good morning, everybody. I see we have lots of people checking in today. Today is, can you believe it, Friday, August 7th, and I'm Linda, and Carl Sullivan is over here on the controls, and we are Colorworks Designs. Welcome to the Colorworks Design House, and it is... So hello, hello, everybody. I see we have lots of people checking in there. I'm going to get to our tutorial in just a minute, but this is a really fun, um, fast project that we have for you today. Um, let's see what's going on. This is episode number 11, if you can believe it, of the Fab Friday broadcast. And we are so happy you are all here. Please go ahead and like and share this video with as many people as you'd love to. Um, share it with pets and family and friends. And don't forget that we always repost all of our Fab Friday videos up here on the Facebook page, in the Colorworks Quilt Along page, and also over at the Colorworks YouTube channel. So we have some very exciting news behind me happening and some other announcements. But the first thing I want to do is check in with the Cactus Cam. Nothing. Nothing going on, but it I is cooler. We have there. some builders, yes. Builders way across, but it is um, a little bit cooler. Last week it was about 120 degrees. Now we're topping out for the next seven days at 111. So let's see who's checking in from where before we go to winners and other big announcements. Trudy, Trudy. hello from Florida. Thank you for joining us today. And I think we have Pat from back in Pine North Pine Carolina Pine. and Pinehurst. Yes, hello, Pat. Kathy from and Kathy from Texas and Kelly from Tennessee. Thank you guys for checking in. We really appreciate that. Barbara from Granada Hills. Good morning, Barbara. And another Barbara. And good morning. Yay. Barbara Hagen Wright says, yay. And Julie, our friend from Oceanside. Thank you guys for checking Julie in. Likes our and Julie says, so excited to buy your new pattern. Well, thank you. We're going to get to that announcement in just a minute, minute. But first, I want to let you guys know who won last week's $10 Colorworks gift card. As you know, every week we give away a $10 Colorworks gift card. And so last week's big question uh, was what was your preferred quilting method, whether it was by hand or machine or walking foot. And so the winner of this week's $10 gift card is... Congratulations, Nancy. So we will get you that $10 gift card by email. Um, and so um, congratulations. And everybody stay tuned for the end of this broadcast for the question for this week where you can get eligible to answer, I mean, to win a $10 Colorworks gift card. And of course, we put everybody in the random thingamajizer. So we have been busy, busy, busy working on virtual workshops and lectures. And so I just wanted to put that out there in case any of you are in a guild and you are looking, as most guilds are, for speakers or for workshop offerings uh, for the fall of this year or early next year for some reason. Um, we are prepared to offer you lectures and workshops here at Colorworks. We're actually going to start our season of virtual lectures and workshops uh, next week. And we have been booked through August, September, October. So we feel very blessed about that. Um, so we're going to be doing changing the studio here into a virtual workshop with cameras over cutting boards and cameras over sewing machines and things of that nature. But I wanted to put the link there just in case anybody is out there and you are with a guild or even a quilt shop might be looking for classes because they can't yet offer classes in person. We are offering virtual lectures and workshops. So if you go to the colorworks.com, that's our website, colorworks.com, and pick uh, select the tab that says workshop, you'll see a little video of me talking to you for about three minutes about all of our workshop offerings, all of our lecture offerings, as well as find descriptions of all of our uh, workshops there and a rate sheet and other things. So please go check that out. But we have been busy doing that and getting ready for that. And now I want to move on to what is behind me here. So we just released two new patterns. So if you're on our newsletter list and you are a subscriber, then you got in your email an advance notice of this the other day that these two new patterns, and I'll put them up here, but we'll get closer in depth. They are Modbox and all stacked up. They are now released. There we go. 
Those are the pattern covers. They are now 20% off for pre-ordering. And what that means is that the print version, if you prefer paper patterns, those are coming in around about August 24th. But if you order now, you'll still save 20% off. And if you like a PDF electronic version, that's still 20% off, but you can actually have that immediately. You can download it now immediately. So both those patterns are available. Let's take them one by one. The first one is all stacked up. Here's some other close-ups of different versions we've done. This is a beautifully patchwork pieced uh, quilt uh, that comes in five different sizes in the pattern, baby size to king size in the pattern for you. It is scrappy friendly, so if you want to use quarter yard cuts and eighth yard cuts, you can, but it's also a third yard friendly. So something like the baby quilt, you only need 12 one third yard cuts. Something like the lap quilt that's on the right hand side of the page, you just need 20 one third yard cuts to get that look. And of course, the one on the left side of the page, which is all done out of cave faucet, is our scrappy version, and that has quarter yard and eighth yard cuts. So that is called all stacked up, and that's one of our new patterns. And the other one is Mod Box. And this is the one you see behind me when we get back to that shot. But that on the left is the one made out of 10 half yards plus background fabrics. The one in the middle, which is the Carolyn Freelander bundle that I showed you a couple weeks ago, that's the baby size version. And then the one on the right hand side is the table runner, and that uses seven fat quarters and then background yardage. So both those are beautiful, beautiful quilts patterns available, 20% off. And if we come back here, we'll show you, yes, oh, sorry, the summer sale is still going on. So if you want to partake in some bundles like this one, which is the Carolyn Freelander bundle that I used on the baby quilt that you saw in Modbox there, that's 30% off. Or perhaps you want some K faucet fabric to do our tutorial today or for All Stacked Up, 30% off. So this is all while supplies are limited. Our summer sale continues for fabrics and fabric kits and bundles at 30% off. And then these two new patterns are now available in the shop at 20% off. Remember you're pre-ordering uh, paper versions to ship to you automatically August 24th. So with that, let's see if anybody else is checking in anywhere before we go to the tutorial which I'm excited Melanie. about. Melanie says, looking, looking forward, forward to our virtual lecture with the South Bay Quilters Guild. We are too, Melanie. So we thank you for hosting us and we can't wait to see, see you guys uh, virtually uh, in the next few weeks. So anybody else, Carl? We've got Carol. Carol She's said, already, got stacked up. already bought all stacked up. Great, thank you so much, Carol. Thank you, you guys. We really appreciate your support and your patronage of our small little business here at ColorWorks. Let's get on to this nice little tutorial now. So this is just something that is super easy, super fun. It's scrap friendly, as you can see. And as you go through the tutorial, you're gonna see how super easy it is. It makes a great gift for somebody who uh, might need some brightening up in their room or in their home. It makes a great uh, bright spot in your house or in your sewing studio. So let's roll the video first and I'll show you the tutorial. Okay, so let me show you what you'll need to gather in your sewing studio and also purchase if you need to. You're going to need to get some heat and bond light, which is about a yard or half a yard, and that's a fusible adhesive web. You can also use Steam Seam 2 light if you'd like or something comparable. You'll also need to get yourself a frame. And so this one I bought at Michael's. It came in a pack of two. I like these kind of shadow box frames. They're cheap. Um, they don't cost a lot. They have a piece of glass that you can take out if you'd like, um, but they're also deeper inset. And that's a really good, nice quality for this particular project. Next, go into your stash and start selecting some fabrics. I like the K faucet fabrics because they give you lots of choices for motifs. All of these um, have choices involved. And so go ahead, you might have a bag of scraps like I do, and you can just go ahead and start cutting apart 
your scraps into little bits like this that give you options. And so all of these are options, as you can see. For instance, I can go and cut the center out here, or I could cut the whole flower out here. Again, each one of these shapes, these pinwheels, are options. More options here to create more flower motifs. Once you've selected your scraps that you think you might like to use, go ahead and back each one of these with some fusible web. And again, this could be scraps of fusible web that you have, or the half yard that you've gathered from your materials. So once you've done that, you're gonna go ahead and we're gonna cut apart all of these motifs and create lots of choices for ourselves. So you've backed all your uh, motifs that you think you might wanna use or scraps with the fusible web um, on the back to give yourself lots of choices. And now it's time just to have some fun cutting out all of these shapes. Give yourself lots of options. Go ahead and cut out the shapes. You can be as fancy as you want with that cut going in and out or not. If a shape goes off the page, so to speak, like this one is cut off on this side, don't worry. You might tuck that under something else and it's still usable. Um, so take a sharp pair of scissors and your motif and just start having fun cutting out these shapes. Um, so you just cut them out following the outline on the fabric or make it up if you want to. Um, if you don't like what you're seeing there, maybe cut a little deeper into the shape or use some other part of the shape there. But be sure to give yourself lots and lots and lots of choices because you're gonna find that as you overlap these flowers to make the little vase um, of flowers that you're gonna need probably more than what you actually think you might. So give yourself lots of choices. Go ahead and cut everything up. Don't forget also to cut your vase shapes out. So these are the two vase shapes that are on the, oops, sorry, on the attached PDF that you will see in the information uh, description here of this video. You just download that PDF or you can make up your own vase shape. This is the inner vase shape that goes onto the outer vase shape right there. And um, you'll also need to gather for yourself some background fabric. So depending on what frame size you bought, um, you're gonna need roughly about an inch larger all the way around of background fabric. And I'm gonna show you next what you're gonna do with this. So once you've done all your motif cutting, it's time to prepare your background. And you'll need some a glue stick or some 505 adhesive spray. Make sure it's the temporary adhesive. You're not gonna need a lot of either one of these. Basically for what we're gonna do, take your frame, go ahead and take out everything from the frame like so. And in each one of these frames, you move the back, there should be a piece of chipboard, which is a, just a very light weight, flexible piece of cardboard. Um, usually most frames have this, which is the same size as the frame. This is what we're gonna cover the background material in. So you're just gonna take your chipboard, spray it down with some fusible spray. Again, I like the 505 spray, or you can use a glue stick or anything, and take your background fabric and just stick it right on the chipboard. Go ahead, smooth it out take it over to the back side, and then start to bring these back here with a little glue stick. And so when you're done getting all your background in place, you should have something that looks like this. And basically I've got that kind of neatly trimmed in the back. And now I'm gonna take this over to my sewing machine and actually sew a little bit of a grid pattern in the back here just to decorate up the background of the flower vase. So I'm here at my Bernina, I'm ready to go. Um, I just want to give you a word of warning. Make sure you change your needle over when you do this to the 9014 Microtech Sharp or even a 100 size needle. You're going to need something super powerful uh, to go through that chipboard that you've got. I'm using a variegated thread here. I'm just going to do some straight stitch quilting along the background. You're going to want to start with a leader piece that will help you from not getting a thread nest uh, on the back of the chipboard. I have also marked my chipboard, as you can see, with this center line. You'll see it as I start to stitch. This is going to be my first stitch down the center. Uh, and then I'm just going to work a quarter inch off from this as I sew this background. And you can see the chipboard is going along quite nicely here in the machine. So again, when you get to the end, use a little leader piece just to avoid thread mess. So I have two leader pieces going there. So 
I'm back and I've done all my machine quilting on the chipboard here. You can do as much quilting as you want. I just did straight line quilting. And so now I'm ready to start putting my motifs down on my background here. So just have fun now placing, you've got your vase cut out with the inner vase, that's kind of the illusion of water in the vase. And then you can have fun placing shapes around. Remember the more kind of free form, the more organic it looks, the better. Um, just have fun uh, placing these shapes. Flowers are very organic things. Um, whatever floats your boat, um, and spend as much time here as you need to to make this look the way you want it to look. And you might even throw something up there like so. Uh, you can go to town and keep adding more. The other thing you can do is if you want something to have more of a three-dimensional look, you can actually take a piece of foam tape. This is double-sided foam tape that you get at Michael's or Hobby Lobby or at Walmart or anything. And you can just put a piece back there. And then if you wanted something to have more of a three-dimensional look, like stand off from the background a bit, you could do something like that. I think we need just like one more, maybe here, something like that. And once you are all done, you will fuse that in place. So that means you'll iron it with a hot iron in place. And then if you want to, you can actually do some more quilting on the um, motifs that you selected. You could um, decorate them up with some bedazzling uh, jewels if you want or other things. And when you are complete, you would just then stick that back into your shadow box frame and your project is done and ready to be given as a gift or hang on the wall. So there you go. So super easy, super fun. Again, the vase shape right there is a downloadable PDF, um, little uh, like one-sided piece of paper that you can download. You can enlarge that vase shape if you want to. You can come up with your own vase shape of a square or a round circle, whatever you want to do there. We just gave you that idea of the vase shape to make it easy to do this project. It is super fun and it uses up scraps and it just makes a great gift too. These frames, you can actually get two for one, I think for something like $12 over at Michael's. So they are great. They're just, you know, kind of deep frames. And another idea I wanna show you is I actually did it with an oil painting of my aunt. So this was my Aunt Betty's and she uh, painted this little oil painting for us. And I wanted to have it framed but, you know, when I framed it, when I went to the framer, they wanted something like $200 to frame this tiny little oil painting with a mat and stuff. And so we just took a piece of Cape Fawcett fabric, as you see back there, and put the oil painting right on top of it. So that's just another idea that you can do with these little shadow box frames there. Um, so let's see, are there any comments or questions about the tutorial um, before we bug out of here for the weekend and get going? Let's see. Oh, Jen says, love the new patterns. Why, thank you, Jen. So yes, new patterns, 20% off in the shop. Um, Nancy, I think, says, so pretty. Yes, it actually, whatever your imagination goes with it, it's the way to do it. You could just do a montage of flowers. They don't have to be in a vase or anything like that. So let's check in with the cactus cam one more time before we bug out. Golfers. We have golfers. They're crazy. Look at that. Look at them go. So it's, a, it's probably at least 110 out there and they are golfing. Oh my goodness, crazy stuff. Yes, Julie says this is such a fun project idea for scraps. It is, absolutely. If you have little scraps hanging around, just go ahead and slap the fusible web on the back and cut little shapes out, it's perfect. And our other comment, let's see, Barbara says, what a special gift. Yes, it is. When Carl brings that up, do you see that? We did. We popped oh, it up. you popped it up already. Oh, okay. sorry. I am behind the times then. Okay. So let's see. This week's question for the ColorWorks $10 gift card. So answer below in the comment section is, what is your favorite flower? Hmm. That's an easy, easy, easy question to answer. You, don't, you know, anything goes. You can even put like a K-Fawcett piece of fabric as your favorite flower. So let's see what else we're doing here quickly. Quick Melanie says, what pen did you use for first marking on the piece? The pen I used was a Frixion pen. That's the iron off pen. So you can use that. You can also just put a piece of masking tape straight down the center of that and then use the edge of the masking tape as your first line and then come a quarter inch. 
a quarter inch off from that line as well. So it's whatever works for you. You can use, um, I wouldn't use water soluble because that would mean you'd have to wet the chipboard down and it might disintegrate underneath the fabric. Um, next, let's see. Dee Dee, I'm oh, ordering the all stacked up pattern to get started. Oh, thank you, Dee Dee. Yes, those are in the shop. So a couple reminders, don't forget, fabrics, 30% off. Those are till supplies last. Patterns are 20% off. You're pre-ordering the paper pattern to arrive to you on or about August 24th. The PDF pattern, meaning the downloadable file of this pattern is now available at 20% off and that's available immediately to you if you prefer electronic patterns. So I wanna thank everybody for joining us today. Don't forget to comment below of what your favorite flower is to enter into the $10 ColorWorks gift card. Next week, I have a special tutorial for you. It's going to be curvilicious piecing. And so what I mean by curvilicious piecing is what you see in the background here of the mod fish is curvilicious piecing. So I'm gonna show you how to do that really simply. I'm gonna show you some other blocks that you can do with curvilicious piecing, and that will be next week's tutorial. So I thank everybody for joining us again today. We really appreciate your support. Please like and share this video with your friends. Share it with as many people as you'd love to. And make sure you let everybody know that our patterns are now available. And we so appreciate your support. So thank you guys very much. We are out of here for the weekend. Enjoy your weekend. And happy Colorishes Quilting always. Bye-bye.